John chapter 1. Okay, where is it? John chapter 1. We're moving on. John chapter 1. And we're in verse 26. We talked about baptism last week. I hope we learned what baptism is. What baptism, how to do it. We'll learn about the ways people do it wrong. Remember, John the Baptist is not the foundation of the Baptist church. Believe it or not, there are people who believe that. There are Baptists who say, we go all the way John, back to John the Baptist. Well, well, I had thought that was the turning point. Yeah, you got to remember, John the Baptist was before the death, burial, and resurrection. He died before him. Okay. Are we doing John again? This is like the most popular one, right? Everybody yep. needs like a billion trillion Yep. Okay. This, this is the simplest gospel yeah. and the most up-to-date gospel of the gospel. And Lord God, the Father, just ask you to bless now and help us and guide us through your word, Lord God. I just pray for Ron and his mother and you to show up. And Lord God, uh, um, I just pray for Michael, Lord. Lord, maybe you can show up and be with us uh, later next week, Lord. Just to your honor and glory. For Jesus' sake we pray. Amen. So, John chapter 1, verse 26. John answered said, I baptize you with water. But there standeth one among you whom you know not. So we're, we're coming to Jesus Christ. And John says, guess what? There's a crowd of people. Jesus is there. And they don't even know who he is yet. And I'm going to get after it again because people say, well, they, the people in the Old Testament look forward to the cross. They don't even know that Jesus is right. The Messiah is standing there. Now let me ask you a question. There stands one among you whom he knew not. Now you would think the way the Catholic Church draws the picture of Jesus and the apostles with the halo. You would think that Jesus' halo, if he had one, which he didn't, but you would think the halo would say, uh, who's that guy with the glove? He says Jesus is standing there, and they don't even recognize him, so there is no halo. He's one of them. Remember, he's Jewish. We already discussed that. He came onto his own. His own received him not. He it is who cometh after me. He was born after John the Baptist is older than Jesus, about six months. He is preferred before me, whose, shoe, whose shoes latch it, I am not worthy to unloose. So the Messiah is coming, and you don't even know who he is. He's here right now, and he's, you don't even know. You have no idea. And he says, he's coming after me. John came baptizing. John is the forerunner. And we saw that in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 1 through 8. John was prophesied. Bowing down or having a person sit, raise, raise their feet up. That's a servant's duty to do the this, this, this shoes, to wash the feet. So let's go to John chapter 13, verse 5. John says, I'm not even worthy to be the servant of Jesus. And Jesus will say later on about John, greater, there's no greater of all the, the, the children born of a woman. John chapter 13, verse 5. After he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet and to wipe them with a towel, within he was girded. That's a servant's job. And Jesus is teaching the disciples, hey, listen, you know what? I'm God. You know I'm God. If I'm sitting here washing your feet, you ought to do unto others. And they, they got the foot washing in some churches. That's not one of the ordinances. But this is an example um, verse 15, same chapter, 
13, 15. I have given you an example. The foot washing is an example. We're not commanded to, to wash each other's feet. But he's saying, listen, if I be a servant, and I'm bowing down to wash your feet, it would be nothing for me to help Ron with something, Ron to help you with something, or you to help somebody, or you to help somebody else. There's no job beneath you. You can't say as a Christian, you know, I'm not worthy of that. And I've had preachers. I'm not worthy. Get somebody else. No, that's not what a Christian is. We're to help others. We're to love others. And whatever it is, it is not beneath us. Hey, Skyly? Yes. Wouldn't it be easier if you all read a little bit? Um, you can read most of it, but sometimes we... we, we we'll we break it down scripture by scripture so we can get the understanding. John chapter 1 again. Verse 27. And it's a picture of a servant bending down, putting the shoes on, and strap in the shoes. And John says, I'm not even I'm not worthy to be a servant to the Messiah. John is humble. Verse 28. These things were done in Beth Arbor, beyond Jordan the river, where John was baptized. Now, Beth, when you see the word Beth in the Bible, that is Hebrew for house. Oh. Bethel mm -hmm. is house. Mm -hmm. L.E. is Jehovah, the house of God. So Beth Arbor would be the house of Arbor, and the Arbor is Ford, F-O-R-D. It's a body of water. So this is the house of a body of water. And there's some things that you can get with the Hebrew and Greek certain meaning. Wherever you see a name like El, E-L, Samuel, that's Jehovah, God, E-L. Um, Elijah, the E-L is God. So Beth is house. So if you know somebody named Beth, her name is House. That's, and even when you, if, if you get a, a dictionary of children's names, you look up Beth, it'll say Hebrew House. Yeah, I know, I know Beth. Like Rachel, oh, her oh. name Hebrew means you, baby lamb. Oh, oh wow. So every name has a meaning. Or John one twenty nine. The next day, John sees Jesus, Jesus coming unto him. And here we go. Here's our study. And, I, and said, said unto Jesus, Behold the Lamb of God. Here's the announcement. Which take away the sin of the world. John the forerunner has now proclaimed. See that man over there? That's Jesus. There he is. There's the Messiah. So from now on, in the beginning books of, 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 the, of the Gospels, from now on, when they say, we don't know who you are, we have no idea, when sorry, John proclaimed openly, that man right there, see him, that's the Messiah, that's the one. So as the Christian is looking for Jesus to come, in our Bible study, Jesus has come this Friday afternoon, in our Bible study. And he's coming again. But he's not going to come walking on the planet earth for the Christian. The Bible with the rapture, we're going to meet in the clouds with those that have died and those that are living. And then we're going to go even further and meet Jesus in the air. Jesus is not coming down to the planet earth to meet us. A lot of people will mistakenly teach that. When the rapture happens, we're going up to the clouds. Is dialing? Yes. I feel uncomfortable... Um, not doing the way you're doing it. Um, uh, this is how we're going to do it. I'm sorry. So we're looking at the Behold the Lamb of God. And we're going to look at the Lamb of God. That's who we're going to look at today. Genesis 22 8. Genesis 22 8. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at the scriptures when John said, Behold the Lamb of God. It wasn't like, what are you saying? 
It wasn't like that. And what we're looking at is they're like, huh? Again, you can't say, well, they were looking forward to the, to the Calvary. They didn't even recognize the Messiah. Now, Genesis 22, 8, Genesis chapter 22 is the great verse of Calvary. God has told Abraham to sacrifice your only son. When, and it's to show us God the Father offering His only begotten Son. Abraham pictures God. Isaac pictures Jesus Christ. They're going up on a hill. And this very hill that you read about in Genesis 22, 8 is the same hill where Jesus Christ will go and be sacrificed. This is the Old Testament Calvary. In Genesis 22, 8, And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb. Abraham saying, God's not going to give a lamb. God's going to give himself the lamb. And when we come to John chapter 1 and, and John says, Behold the Lamb of God, all eyes or minds or thoughts should have ran themselves over to Genesis 28 when Abraham said God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. When he provides himself, that is Jesus Christ. And you can throw the Jehovah Witnesses out the window because that lamb, Jesus Christ, is God because Abraham said God will give himself. And what way is he going to give himself? It's going to be the lamb. So when John the Baptist says, Behold the Lamb of God, there is the lamb that Abraham told Isaac about. It's God manifested in the flesh. Acts chapter 12. Acts chapter 12, before Israel becomes a nation. Acts chapter 12, verse 1. Before Israel, this is the night that Israel will become a nation. And they are redeemed by the blood. And it's particularly interesting because Acts chapter 12 is going to point us to that Lamb of God dying. The same sacrifice that Abraham told Isaac, God should provide himself for a burnt offering. Acts chapter 12, verse 1, The Lord spake to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt. This month, which is called Abed, this month shall be to you a beginning of months. This is the first month of the Jewish calendar. It's Abed. It shall be the first month of the year to you. There Abed is our January. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel. Say the tenth day of this month, Abed, tenth, they shall take them every man a lamb. That's the land that, that uh, Abraham spoke about. According to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God. If the household be too little for the lamb. Now watch how the lamb changes here. In verse 3, it's a lamb. Verse 4, it becomes the lamb. Let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls. Every man according to his eating shall make your town for the lamb. Your lamb. Now it's become your land. You can look at the nation of Israel. All the listen, the children of Israel are called sheep, John chapter 10. You can pick out any of the Jews. But there is one Jew of all Jews to be Jews. And of that one Jew, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lamb of the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world, he better be your lamb. 
If he's not your land, you're not saved. You can acknowledge Jesus, but is he your Jesus? Is he your Savior? Your land shall be without blemish, without sin. That's Jesus. A male of the first year. Jesus Christ was a male. He was first begotten of God. He shall take it out from the sheep and the nation of Israel and from the goats. He lived amongst the Jews and he lived amongst the Gentiles. He shall keep it up until the 14th day of the first month. Abed 14. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. What did the Jews cry before Pilate? Crucify him! Crucify him! The Jews said, let his, let his blood be upon us and our children. Who put Jesus on the cross? The Jewish people. Pilate was willing to let him go. Listen, I find no fault in him. Three times. I find, and the Jews, crucify him. Listen, I don't, listen, the guy's innocent. He's no fault. Crucify him. Listen, I'll let Barabbas go. We'll take Barabbas. You crucify him. All that day was the Abed 14th. The first month, the 14th day of the Jewish calendar is when Jesus Christ just read on. The whole congregation of the, shall kill it in the evening. Jesus Christ, evening in the Bible of Jewish time, Jesus Christ died Abed, Abed 14 at 6 p.m. according to chapter 12, verse 6. Jesus Christ is the only one who knew what day, what date, what year, and at what time he says, he gave up the ghost and died. 6 p.m. This land in Exodus 12 is the same land that Abraham told Isaac God will provide himself a lamb. This is the same land that John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God. He's going to die on April, 4th, on April 14th at 6 p.m. There it is. And not all Israel got that. So how do you look forward to the cross? At that point that John announced it, they should have been ready with their calendars. So he's, Jesus Christ, Abraham said, the Lamb of God. John the Baptist said, the, the Lamb of God. Exodus 12 says, Jesus is the Passover Lamb. He is the final lamb to be offered. One sacrifice for all. Now they had sacrifices after Jesus Christ died, but that was ill effect. And at 70 AD, the temple comes down. There are no more sacrifices. The day, the evening at 6 p.m. when Jesus Christ died, God said on that cross, it is is finished. No more bull, the blood of bulls and goats. We're done with that. We're in the New Testament. A testament begins with the death of the testator and the death of the testator is God dying on that cross according to what Abraham said and according to what Moses was told by God in Exodus 12. Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8. Right okay. after John. We are, I'm going to go to the car. Okay, I'll no pick you up in like a, like a little while. Uh, yeah, we get done about three. Okay. Acts chapter eight. eight. Acts chapter eight. Don't forget your Bible. We're okay. thirty-two. Okay. Now this is the Ethiopian unit, and we looked at him last week. The Ethiopian unit has some form of scripture. Some kind of gospel draft. And the Ethiopian is reading about something that's very important. And, we're, and we will go to Isaiah and read what he's reading. But Acts chapter 8 verse 32. The place where the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep. Came on his own. He was Jewish. To the slaughter. Like a lamb... 
dumb, that don't mean dumb, that means unable to speak. Jesus Christ didn't speak. Jesus Christ didn't ask for a lawyer. At one point, Pilate asked him, he said, where are the, where, what's hence for you? Jesus didn't answer. A lamb dumb before his shearers, so open he not his mouth. And humiliation and judgment was taken away, and who shall declare his generation? For this life is taken from the earth. Death! And the eunuch answered Philip, by the way, that would be uh, Isaiah 53, 7, if you want to know. That's Isaiah 53, 7, verse 34. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh the prophet this? Of himself, Isaiah, or some other man? Now here's the answer. Here's the answer to what Abraham said. Here's the answer that God said to Moses. Here's the answer to Isaiah. Philip opened his mouth, began the same scripture, and preached unto him Jesus. Who's Jesus? He's that lamb. The, the Messiah. That's the one. That's, that's who's proclaimed, Philip says. Israel didn't get it. That's the Passover lamb. That's the one that was to redeem Israel. Revelation chapter 5. We'll get into more about the lamb, but we got a lot of scripture we're going to look at before we close the day. Revelation chapter 5. This is all about the lamb. Revelation chapter 5, verse 6. And this is, this is not to be a pun, but this is some biblical meat here. Not many Christians know what we're studying right now. And it's sad. Revelation 5, 6, And behold, lo, in the midst of the throne, that's God's throne, in heaven, and of the four beasts, the cherubims, in the midst of the elders, stood a capital L lamb, as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent forth into the earth. There is the lamb, capital L, Standing in heaven at the throne of God. Look at verse 8, chapter 5, verse 8. Okay, I'll see you later. When he had taken the book, the four beasts and four twenty-four elders fell down before the Lamb, capital L, having every one of them harps. There's your harps. And they're not angels. I don't know who gave the hearts to the angels. And golden vials filled of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. Jesus Christ is in heaven, standing before the throne of God, and the cherubims and those four and twenty-four elders, who are, we don't know who they are. They fall down before the Lamb, Jesus. Now that has to be somebody, because in heaven you just don't fall down before anybody. And worship. Well, we've already seen what Philip said. Philip said that lamb is Jesus Christ. They are falling down worshiping. God will provide himself a lamb, the Passover lamb, the lamb of God, the lamb that was dumb before his shears that gave his life. Now here he is, capital L. And by the way, it's capital L in John chapter 1. Uh, verse 12, same chapter, Revelation 5, 12. Saying with a loud voice. People don't like my loud voice. A loud voice is holy. Worthy is the Lamb, capital L, that was slain, murdered, killed, to receive power, 
and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. That's the Lamb of God. And every creature which is in heaven and on earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them heard I saying this is the animal speaking at one point in time blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne God and the Lamb capital L forever and ever that land that capital L and Lamb is forever it's eternal and he's got riches, he's got power, he's got wisdom, he's got strength, he gets honor, he gets glory, he gets blessings. Mm -hmm. That lamb is Jesus Christ. Chapter 6, verse 1. Chapter 6, verse 1 really begins the tribulation period. I mean, we got we got the horses that show, but begin the, the I mean here's here's the beginning of the tribulation period. What starts the tribulation period? And I saw when the Lamb, capital L, opened one of the seal. Now we've already been raptured, chapter four. Jesus Christ already has raptured us saints. We're not going through this mess. The same one that raptured us. Is now the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder. And one of the four beasts said, Come and see. Now begins the tribulation period. The Antichrist does not start the tribulation period. The Lamb, capital L, begins the tribulation period after he calls his bride away. Chapter 4. The church does not show up anymore in the book of Revelation to Acts 19. Yeah, 19 I think it is. From chapter 4 to 19, the church is not in the tribulation. I believe we're being judged at the judgment seat of Christ, but we're not in the tribulation period. And the Lamb begins the tribulation. Why? Because Israel rejected the Lamb. You want to reject me? Okay, fine. I'm going to chastise you. Seven years, Jacob's trouble. Mm -hmm. Chapter 6, verse 16. Chapter 6, verse 16. This is the, at the end of the tribulation period. Because we're not going to do verses uh, 1 all the way through, but that's the tribulation period. But verse 16, at, the, at the, last, the second advent, when Jesus Christ mounts up and ready to come, and I saw the mountains and rocks, wait, and, excuse me, and said unto the mountain rocks, these are the people on the earth, fall on us, hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, God, and from the wrath of the Lamb, capital L, and that's the second advent. When Jesus Christ comes back to this earth, not the clouds that get up, when He comes back to the earth, He's angry. He's called the Lion of the tribe of Judah. He's going to take vengeance. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Chapter 7, verse 9. And these are all revelation today. So, we're not going to go far. Revelation 7, verse 9. This is the 144,000, the beginning of Acts 7. And they are not the Jehovah Witnesses. I question them. It can't be the Jehovah Witnesses. Because they're called men and there are women. But, Acts chapter 7, verse 9. And I saw, behold, and lo, a great multitude, a lot of people, which no man could number, all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, stood before the throne. That's God's throne. And
and before the capital L, lambs, clothed in white robes and palms in their hands. That's us. Standing before God's throne, and at the throne, we're worshiping God and the Lamb that Philip said is Jesus Christ. And cried with a loud voice, saying, right? Here's what we're going to cry, a loud voice. Salvation. Who is your salvation? Okay. To our God. Oh, Jehovah Witnesses are out again. Which sitteth upon the throne, God's on the throne, and unto the capital L Lamb. Who are we going to worship in heaven? Charles Wesley? Uh uh. Billy Sunday? Uh uh. We're going to worship God and whoever this Lamb, capital L, is, and Philip said, it's Jesus. Paul said the Passover lamb is Christ. That's who we're going to worship. That's who's there. We're going to sing praises and we're going to shout hallelujah to the lamb. Some people think we're going to get up to heaven and we're going to worship them. No way. Verse 14, 714. Now, if you haven't got it, this, this one should do it. 714. And I said unto him, Sir, he's talking to the angel, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of the great tribulation. So here's people out of the tribulation. And have washed their robes, all right, and made them white. What did they wash them in? In the blood of of the capital L Lamb. There's only one blood that can wash it. The Passover Lamb. That is standing right beside God on the throne. And I don't think it was a Methodist, and I don't think it was a Baptist. And it's not Elijah, it's not Moses. It's the capital L, Lamb. Verse 17, same chapter, last verse. For the Lamb, capital L, which is in the midst of the throne, shall feed them and shall lead them into living fountains of water. Did not Jesus say, I am the water of life? And God shall wipe away all their tears from their eyes. This lamb is associated with God and it's associated with the throne. We've already known that it's Jesus Christ. Is this not a shame that Christians don't know what we're talking about? And they love the book of Revelation. But they are ignorant of what we're talking about today. This is the same Passover in Revelation chapter 12 that established the, the nation of Israel. That Passover lamb was to be a sign for the coming lamb. That John said in John chapter 1, look there, see that man? Behold the lamb of God. What's that lamb of God? We're reading about him right now. In heaven. And he was slain, we saw well, there's one lamb that's been slain that's worthy of a capital L. Chapter 12, verse 11. Revelation 12. Revelation 12, 11. These are all in the book of Revelation. We got one, we got one in Jeremiah at the end, but these are all Revelation. Revelation 12, 11. Now, if you didn't get it right the first time, here we go. Ready? And they overcame him, the devil, verse 9. They overcame him by the blood of the capital L Lamb.
I'll even give the Catholics enough credit to say that they, they eat the body and drink the blood of Jesus, but that's wrong. I'll give them that much credit. They claim the blood of Jesus, though they're wrong. Give them credit. Give them credit. I give them that much credit, but the, but the Mass is wrong. But there's one blood that washes us. And Hebrew says it's not the blood of bulls and goats, but the precious blood of Jesus, Peter says. 13.8, Revelation 13.8. Now, if you didn't get it this time, let's try it this time. Why don't people find this? Because they don't study the Scripture. You need, with your, you need to read the King James Bible. You need uh, uh, Pilgrim's Progress. And you need to get a Bible concordance. A good one. This is how I find it. I, I do it concordance. Revelation 13, 8. And all that dwell upon the earth oh, shall worship Him. Okay, who's the Him? Whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb, capital L, slain from the foundation of the world. At the great white throne judgment, is what he's talking about, they're going to stand before God. Who is that God they're going to stand before? Where Micah says, prepare to meet thy God. Who are the people at the great white throne going to stand before? The Lamb, Jesus Christ. Now I believe that I believe God's going to allow them to say whatever they want to say. Well, how about this when they're done? Oh, your religion took care of you. What about these? And then show them the nail prints in their hand. Are you saying that that was better than me? The one that is going to tell them to go take a jump in the lake of fire is the one that was slain. You say from the foundation of the world. What is that? God already knew that man was going to fall before He even created man. The all knowledge of God. And it, from the foundation of the world, Jesus said, I will step in and go for him. If He did it, from the time that Adam and Eve failed and sinned against God, we would all die and just go to hell. Jesus said, I'll step in. I'll take their place, Father. And Abraham understood that. He said, Son, God should provide Himself the land, and the Jehovah Witnesses have not gotten it right yet. Capital L, Lamb. 14.1. Everybody loves Revelation. But they don't understand Revelation. And I looked, lo, a lamb, capital L, stood on Mount Zion, and with him the 144,000, that's not Jehovah's Witnesses, having his father's name written in their forehead. That's the second advent. Who comes at the second advent? The Lord Jesus Christ. Who settles the throne and the kingdom and the temple on Mount Zion? The Lord Jesus Christ. That lamb. Verse 4. 14 4. Alright, you got a Jehovah Witness? You ready? They are they which are not defiled by a woman. Ask that man if he's ever been with a woman. As soon as he said yes, you're not a Jehovah Witness. They are virgins. I love when they come to my door and they're a woman with their children. You don't qualify. I had a guy come one time with his son. You don't qualify. Because that child was not virgin born. That's the 144,000. These are they which follow the capital lamb. With it so he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the firstborn unto God and to the Lamb. That's the 144,000. That's who the Jehovah Witnesses claim to be. And yet they deny the Lamb. 
If they deny the Lamb being God, how are they going to follow the Lamb? Quite interesting. Because this Lamb is God, and their Lamb is not God. Quite interesting. Quite interesting. Verse 10. Chapter 14, verse 10. In the tribulation. They shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God. No, you don't want that. Which is poured out with, without mixture into a cup of indignation. That is extreme anger. And ye shall be tormented with fire and brimstone. That's hell. In the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the capital L, Lamb. When you are cast off into the lake of fire, Jesus Christ is going to watch you because you denied Jesus Christ. How's that? The one you deny is going to say, I, I, is the one that puts you in. Because you repeat, you rejected the preacher, you rejected the soul winner, you rejected the gospel tract, you rejected the preaching of Jesus. And when you reject Jesus, that lamb, Jesus, is going to cast you in. Jesus didn't do it. You've done it by rejecting Jesus. Right, chapter 14. 15.3. Chapter 15, verse 3. This is Revelation. This is the book every, every Christian loves. And yet they don't know nothing. I, I know Christians right now, and they go out, they witness the gospel, they tell people about Jesus, but they're trying to tell me, don't receive the mark of the beast. Don't take the... I'm not worried about the mark of the beast. That's after I'm going. So, 15, verse 3. They sing the song of Moses. Uh, I forget that. Deuteronomy and Numbers. I forget which one. One of the books of Moses, they have this, right after they come out of the Red Sea. That's not our song. Us Gentiles are not going to sing the song of Moses. We were not redeemed out of the Red Sea. And the song of the capital L, Lamb. Jewish people are going to sing the historic song of Moses and the song of the Lamb that has redeemed them out of the tribulation. And we read that they were washed by the blood. Saying, great and marvelous are the works. The Lamb, now we're talking about the Lamb. Lord God Almighty. He threw Jehovah's Witnesses out again. Because that Lamb is the Lord God Almighty. Just and true are thy ways. Thou King, capital K, of the saints. What was the song of, again? Song of Moses. Isn't that Jewish? That K, that capital K in King is the King of the Jews. Not church. Pilate wrote above the head of Jesus, the King of the Jews. Jesus is coming back, King of kings, and Lord of lords. Not the church. He's never the King of the church. He's the groom. He's the Savior. So we have Jewish people singing the song of Moses, and hallelujah, they're going to be singing the songs to the Lamb, Jesus Christ, who is God, Lord God Almighty. They're going one step above the Jehovah Witnesses. That's interesting. Chapter 17, verse 4. Chapter 17, verse 4. 14, 17, 14. Now this is the Antichrist, the Catholic Church, everybody in the tribulation period. Uh, 
chapter 17, verse 14. There is at least one universal war coming. There is at least World War III. Has it been here for more? At least. At least. There may be more. But at least World War III. These shall make war with the capital L, Lamb, and the capital L, Lamb, shall overcome them. For he is the Lord of lords, and the King of kings, and that's Jesus Christ. The world loves Jesus. Absolutely correctly not. Because they're going to make war with Jesus. And Jesus, I mean, John writes, Marvel not the world hates you. Jesus said, know that the world hated me first before it hated you. And if you are loved by the world, you are not living a Christian life properly. Because the Bible says the world would hate you. They hated Jesus. And they hate Jesus. <coughs> what? I mean, come on. We're supposed to be Christ-like, aren't we? 19.7. Revelation 19.7. We're making our way to the book of Revelation. Yay, Revelation! <laughs> now this is us. Here's the church. You ready? Here's the, here we are. Here we are sitting here in South Daytona, 2020, and we're having a Bible study. Let's now, tribulations period is over, coming to an end. Here we are. Let us be glad and rejoice. Amen. Glory to God. And give honor to Him for the marriage of the capital L, land is come, and His wife, that's the church, has made herself ready. The church is the bride of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the lamb, is the groom. One day there's going to be a royal wedding of all royal weddings. And the church is called the bride. Jesus is never called the king. He is the groom. And when you read Matthew, he talks about the marriage. He's talking about our marriage. But he never mentions the bride. He mentions the guests, the chamber. All the guests are the Jewish people. But that's a whole different story. So there he is again. 19.9. So we'll read verse 8. But the, verse 8 is the church. And to her, that's the church, was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen. What are you going to wear in heaven? You're going to wear fine linen. Clean and white. Now anybody who knows me, you can't put white on me. White won't stay white. If I wear white, there's going to be, ah, here he comes, let's get him. Not in heaven. We are going to be clean and white clothed. For the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. That's us. I'm a saint. Despite what the Catholics say. And he saith to me, write. Okay, write this down, John. Blessed are they which are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Those are the guests. Those are the Jews. You never call the bride to a wedding. I hope you don't have to call the bride. As far as I know, usually the bride's right there, ready to go. And the groom. It's the guest. Make sure, and make sure everybody's there. My own wedding with Lisa, she had to call her family and make sure her family was going to call. She was there. I was there. Now watch. Called unto the marriage supper of the capital L Lamb. One day, we are going to marry our groom, Jesus Christ. And he's going to take us on a honeymoon, on horseback, back to the earth, the millennial reign is the honeymoon of Jesus Christ in the church. What a trip. And he's going to remove all the curses. He's going to remove all the wickedness out of the earth for his bride. Some of the bride are going to get an inheritance. Some of the bride is going to get crowns and rewards. Some are not. But as a church, we're going to marry Jesus Christ one day. 
So glory to God. Chapter 21, 9. Chapter 21, 9. I love the Bible. Chapter 21, verse 9. There came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither. They didn't say, Come up hither. They said, Come hither. I will show you the bride. Who's the bride? The Lamb's wife. And he carried me away in spirit to a great and high mountain, showed me the great city, holy Jerusalem. Descending out of heaven from, from God. That ain't this Jerusalem. That's holy Jerusalem. And that's where we're going to dwell. As the bride of Jesus Christ. We're, am I going to heaven? Kinda. Well, after the earth and heaven and the great white throne judgment is all past. Where am I going? I'm going to New Jerusalem. That's my home. There's the new earth. I believe the Jews get that. And there's the new heavens. I believe the Gentiles get that. What do Christians get? Where is your... Send my mail to New Jerusalem. Just don't send the bills. <laughs> and in the midst of Jerusalem is God, the throne, and Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Uh, chapter 21, verse 14. All the wall of the sea with twelve foundations in the names of the twelve apostles of the capital L. Who had twelve apostles? Just by chance. Gee, I wonder who that lamb is now. Of course, my former is too. I wonder who that lamb is. <laughs> Chapter 21, verse 22. Here we go. This is your home. This is your home. What about the temple? I saw no temple therein. There's no temple in New Jerusalem. What did you see? Okay, I'm glad you asked. The Lord God Almighty and the Lamb, capital L, are the temple of it. There's no big church building in the sky. It's God Almighty and the Lamb. That lamb is, I wonder who that lamb is. Uh, Jesus. Jesus. Now watch this. Ready? 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 Verse 23. Ready? Ready? And the city that we're going to had no need of the sun. Neither the moon. To shine in it. Well, what are you going to do for light? For the glory of God did lighten it, and the Jehovah Witnesses didn't get it. And the lamb, capital L, is the light thereof. God and Jesus are going to light that way. Well, how do you know the Lamb is the light? Did not Jesus say, I am the light? Didn't Jesus have 12 apostles? Mm -hmm. I think we figured out who this Lamb is already. So when John shows up and says, the Lamb of God, who's he pointing to? I wonder who. I wonder who. Okay, let's see where we're at. That was chapter 21. Verse 27. Who goes to, to this city? And who doesn't go? Verse 27, chapter 21. And there shall in no wise enter into anything that defiles. There's nothing that defiles heaven. There's no sin in glory. How's that? Nothing is wrong in heaven. Neither whatsoever work is abomination. There's no abomination. There is no sodomites in heaven because the Bible says sodomy is an abomination. There's no idolatry. Idolatry is abomination. There's none of that. Or make it a lie. There are no liars in heaven. But they which are written in the Lamb's book of life and you get your name in that land the day you receive Jesus Christ as your Savior. Heaven's reservations are the Lamb's book of life. And if your name is in that reservation, you are in the Lamb's home. And the Lamb's home is New Jerusalem. Glory to God. 
chapter 22, verse 1. A little more about our home. And he showed me a pure river of the water of life. Who said he was the water of life? Clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. When you get to the throne of God in glory in New Jerusalem, guess what? There's a river there. And it's crystal clear. Uh, don't they advertise water today? Crystal clear water. They're trying to imitate the water that's before the throne of God. That's what they're trying. That's what they're trying. Verse 3. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb, the Lamb has a throne, shall be in it, and his servant shall serve him. And the serving is with praise and honor and singing and glorification to Jesus. That's the Lamb in the book of Revelation. We just looked at all the passages. There it is. Back to John chapter 1. I lost my bookmark there. Oh, picked up. Somebody must have got it. John chapter 1. John chapter 1. Now let's watch what it says here. And we're going to be done. John 1.29. John 1.29. We got more about it coming up with John 129. Ready? The next day John seeth Jesus. J E S U. Who's that? Coming unto him and saith, Behold the Lamb of God. Look at all the references we just ran. There he is. That's the one that Abraham talked about. Son, God should provide himself. Himself. Himself, a Lamb of God. Tell the Jehovah Witnesses, go take a jump in the flying leap into the lake of fire if they don't believe Jesus is God. Because John the Baptist has said, Abraham, yes, I mean Isaac, yes, Dad, God's going to provide himself a lamb. John the Baptist said, that's Jesus, that's God. God told Moses, the Passover lamb. John the Baptist says it was Jesus. Isaiah 53, which is about the Messiah, the Ethiopian eunuch says, who is this guy? Is it Isaiah? Who is it? Philip began to preach to him who? Jesus. Behold the Lamb of God, Jesus, which take away the sin of the world. I think we know who that Lamb is in the book of Revelation. And the Bible says we're going to be forever with the Lamb of God, if our name is in the Lamb's Book of Life, and that Lamb's Book of Life, if we've been washed by the blood of Jesus. Glory to God. By the way, the Lamb is a young sheep. Jesus was 30 years old when He showed up. That's young. And we've got some other references to look at, and then we'll move to... Oh, we're still in verse 29. A little bit longer. Any questions? Let's pray. Lord God the Father, I just thank you for the Lamb. I thank you, Lord God, that my name is in the Lamb's Book of Life. Lord God, I'm thankful that you know my name. And Lord God, I'm thankful that the righteousness I have is only by the righteousness of Jesus Christ alone. Thank you one day I'm giving all glory, all forever one day, to worship that Lamb. The Lamb that died on the Calvary's cross for my sin. For Jesus' sake I pray. Amen.